So yeah, we're gonna talk more about it when we get in the video, but positioning guide, a new way to do it, and it's not exactly what you think, but it's the best way I think to do it, and again, we'll explain more in the video. But question of the day, what maps would you like to see for this positioning guide? Once you, you know, skip ahead if you want to um, and get a good idea on what's happening and then answer the question, what maps do you want to see and what characters do you want to see? Uh, specifically supports we are going to do right now since that's what we have the most experience in, but we plan to do flanks, damage and tanks over time and given, you know, at least some time on supports for this positioning guide, we'll go ahead and swap over. But if you enjoy this content, be sure to go follow me over my Twitch, where I do live stream every single day besides Wednesdays and Saturdays, which Wednesdays we live stream at 4 p.m. EST on YouTube, 4 p.m. EST every day, but Saturday on Twitch and Wednesday every day, 4 p.m. EST. Join our Discord if you want to check that out, by the way, and see when we go live. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for the support recently. You guys are amazing. I love your faces, and I'll see you in the video. So yeah, this is something you all have been asking for for a long while now, and I finally got around to finding a way to do it. A positioning guide. Um, now, this isn't a positioning guide in its normal sense, but it is going to be an overtime guidance on how to play certain characters and how to handle certain situations that over time you will start to develop ways to position with that character and other characters using that character on that map with that comp etc now positioning is in paladins is not something that is easily explained especially as a support it depends on the map it depends on the team comp it depends on the enemy team comp there are so many variables that go into it i have decided that this is the best course of action to teach you how to position yourself what i will be doing is when i play ranked games that aren't a part of a to z or a wheel of champions game or any other series etc i will take that game and do a positioning guide on that game now today we're going to be doing fury on shattered desert and timber mill just so I can get two out there and because they're they're short games, but there's still stuff to learn. With that being said, it's not easy to explain it. Um, this is the best way to do it. I will talk you through what I was thinking or what I should have been thinking, what I did right, what I did wrong within that game, on that champion, on that map. And that'll help you start to develop your game awareness and game sense for positioning on this character and other characters and on this map and other maps. So let's just jump right into it. I am watching myself here. We are playing Furia on Shattered Desert. We have a double support comp, double tank, one flank, while they have two off tanks, a flank, a Damba and a Bomb King. <clears throat> now, I didn't hit record soon enough in this video, so right now we're positioning on the left side of the map. You're not gonna be able to hear the audio, but I know Zen is on the left side. I know the Ruckus, our Ruckus is on the left side. So I know that our off tank is on the left, our point tank's on in the middle, so is our support. Looking at the picture right now. So this is a perfect position for me to be in. I'm centered within my team. I'm leaning towards my off tank where I can easily run to him for safety and I can actually help him and keep him alive. Now, if I was positioned on the right side of the map right now, I would not have a safe position. I could easily be taken out, but since I know my ruckus is on the left, I have a general assumption that, hey, there's a good chance I won't be flanked from that side because the ruckus is in the way and they're gonna focus him first. So this is usually a good rollout. You wanna be in the center, back center of your team, but on like the opposite side of the majority of the enemy team, that's how I usually explain positioning on rollouts but let's go ahead and click play here and see what happens we get a first blood on the bomb king and again we start leaning towards this ruckus because we know this is our safe spot we see andrew's in trouble there we want to follow up the ruckus on the dive we see we have two kills so now i feel like i can be aggressive so on supports like furia once you get a couple kills on the point fight you can go ahead and get aggressive and start snowballing now why do i go to point here instead of pushing up and why do supports go to point and not push up well let me explain one concept in the game you gain credits for sitting on point supports are probably the most credit dependent class in the game they need chronos they need nimbles they need morale boosts they need veterans they need resilience to stay alive if your support dies it's over so they need those utility cards to keep themselves alive and their allies. How to get those cards? Credits. I am getting four a tick here. So I'm getting four credits every time. Four. 
four. I need to figure out the exact rate in which, but when you push the payload, I think it's two a second. I am now gaining two credits a second. That is a massive increase over time. Now my team falls back to me. I'm still positioned here on the payload. I know the Zin's on the right side, so I know payload's still safe. My team has good positioning. Um, I know that we're not pushed up on the left, so I fall back here. Now, this really is not a good place to position. Now, to explain why, my whole team is leaned right. I saw that there was a bomb king and an off tank on the left side. I fall back to the left. Now I'm vulnerable. If they turn that corner, they could possibly kill me here. So the best place for me to be positioned is right over here. I think here, maybe going up here would be the best spot or just sitting here around this mound so I can heal them. The idea of this position is so I have better line of sight, but there are better ways around that that don't put me in a vulnerable position. Here, Leandro. Now, again, if they had pushed that, it would have made it very hard. But now that our Grok is ulted, we're playing aggressive. Um, and I'm positioned here, finishing the Zen kill. I can still be aggressive since I know two are dead. Now back to payload. So the only reason I pushed there was because of the Grok ult, and I thought that was a really good push. But again, if they had decided to push me and saw that I fell back to that side, things kind of got really bad really fast. Again, farming payload here. There's no reason to get off payload for us. We're not... It's not like we're unsafe. It's not like we're going to get dove. Um, we're leaning towards the left here. Now, when pushing this payload, it's almost better at times on supports or any character. You're either going to use the payload for line of sight to make it harder to hit you, or you should be hugging corners. If I want to push this payload well, I would probably be hugging the left side or swapping to the right side pillar. Because hugging something that you can line a sight behind is always important. Now, I'm in trouble here. I get pushed off, which was good. I fell back with our team. We turned on the Zim together. Now, I see... Now, this isn't a um, positioning thing. But I see we have a pick. And we can get aggressive here. And Ruckus wants to. So, I go ahead and pop the ulti. Um, I can tell... With my also positioning right here is perfect. This could not be better positioning because again, we are in the middle of our team. We see the ruckus and we know they're falling back and our team's looking to play aggressive because they still have one down. We can now look to snowball this and I don't have heal up. So now as soon as I get it, I pop it on the ruckus. I start playing very aggressive here. My tanks are aggressive so they can take the aggro. So I see my team fall back that way. We know. So the reason why this position is actually fine, even though it's not, let me get the beam out of your face there. Even though it's not in the middle of our team, the reason why this position is fine to stay in is I know right here, I can see the Zin. I hit the Zin and I know he's right here. So is the Khan and the Atlas is dead. There's really no one that can kill us. So what we do is we stay here in the middle. Instead of crossing and using our movement ability to get to the other side to our team, we stay here in the middle because we know where the enemy team is. So it's perfect positioning. There are, like I said, very situational things when it comes to positioning that are fine. As long as you have an idea where the enemy team is, it's okay to position not with your team if you're not going to get dove. All right, let's skip forward here. <clears throat> but yeah. Always position typically with your team to be safe, but again, there are times where splitting up for your team are fine, but you need to have a level of awareness to know, hey, this guy cannot push me. And that Zen tried to push me. He crossed the entire lane to try to get to me, and my team turned on him and killed him. Now, I was in a position where he could dive me there, but now let's talk about this rollout really quick. Um, I'm ahead of my team, which sometimes on support is a bad thing to do. On rollouts, you typically want to be behind your team on your mount. Why? Because so you can see where they're going and where they're positioning. Because as a support, you need to base your position around them. So being in front here isn't the best thing, but for me, I know typically where people go on this map, so I'm confident. Um, I look to see where my team's going, terminus to point, and I should be looking to where this ruckus is now, but I'm not. That could have been really bad. Now, if the ruckus had gone right and I didn't see him, See, I can't see him here, so I assume he's on the left. But let's just say he's going late right. I could be dead here. They get a push left, and I could be dead. But now I see the ruckus on the left side. I feel like I'm fine to get aggressive here because I can hear them all on the left. Um, I dash to my team, which is great positioning, and boom, fall back to point, looking for the credits. So that was good positioning. Could have been a little bit better there for a time, but honestly, it wasn't too shabby. All right, so now we're just sitting on payload farming credits. Uh, like we explained earlier, we'll go ahead and skip through this. A little bit ahead here because we're kind of just AFKing on payload. Okay. 
So we heal up uh, Grok. We're in a good position here. We know Ruckus is in front of us. Now our Terminus overdove um, as a support. If people are doing stuff like this with Terminus, sometimes you can try to peek them to heal them, but they are so far in the enemy's base that I would have had to peek either through the middle and then been vulnerable because the Grok and Ruckus are on the left or peek and walk into these two tanks to get line of sight. And I could have easily died to a con and an Atlas. So don't overextend yourself to get a heal on somebody that you can't get a heal on that will put you in trouble. Um, so we stay on payload. That's fine. The Terminus died there. He didn't have ulti. We're just slowly pushing um, the Grumpy Bombs there. Honestly, if I was smart, I would have stayed on payload and been stunned by that to keep the payload pushing to get an extra second or two of the push. But, you know, it is what it is. That's a small little uh, min-max there. That, you know, sometimes can win you the game. A couple seconds are valuable in Paladins. So, yeah, we just stayed on payload here. When those ends dead, we throw the beam, we look for the heal, and then we should be looking to alt here pretty soon. We get a heal off and then we alt. Grok alt goes off. We should have popped our heal before that, but that's fine. Our positioning's great here. We get aggressive, and that's the end of the game. Um, small little tidbits here and there um, from this game to learn from. One, make sure you're in the majority of your team. And second, make sure you're keeping an eye out uh, on where the enemy is rolling out to. Um, because on these point fights, um, I can sometimes see where the enemy are so right here very important note is when on this map specifically i look for right here always because you can tell when the enemy is going right so i keep an eye on that i see the atlas and that's all i see so now i make that assumption that only atlas is on the right so i assume zen and bomb king is on the left now which assumption was true zen and bomb king were both on the left so it was a very good call to make. And on Shattered Desert, you should be looking for that angle every single time to know where they're gonna be so you can position yourself around it. But that is Fury on Shattered Desert. A couple tips for Shattered Desert, a couple tips for Fury there. But now let's throw it over to Timbermill because Timbermill is probably one of the hardest maps to position on support. And I know I made a few mistakes this game that we can talk about and I made some good plays as well. So let's throw it over there. All right, Furia on Timbermill. Um, it is a decent pick. I think it's solid. I think like a Corvus or even a Genos could be better, especially next patch, the Ruby patch with the ultimate change. But Furia isn't a bad pick and you can keep yourself alive against the flankers. The only person I really have to worry about here flanking me is Androxus, but Leon can easily outrange me and kill me. So I now have to think about that going into this map. Think about what they have on the enemy team. You have to, when you're in spawn, think, think. Androxus, Leon, Don, or Makoa. What can they do to kill me? Leon has a range advantage, so she can easily burst me down, and I need to be careful sitting high ground. Androxus, if I don't know where he is on a point fight, I need to be very safe, and I need to have a fallback plan to fall back to an ally if he dives me. Makoa, I can't peek over the edge too much unless I know where Makoa is so I don't get hooked. Also, if he has ultimate and mounts into our backline, we need to have a position ready to dive to so we don't get killed. You need to be thinking about all that going into this map and every map in general. So we were late because we wanted to buy items, but being late is always good. Uh, now I see where all of my team is going without having to look around. I know Ruckus is Khan's going right, um, Atlas is going left, and Androxus immediately tries to dives, <laughs> dive and die. Dies for it. We sit here on the high ground. Now, I don't think this positioning is very good against Leon. <laughs> Leon can easily look to burst me down right now, and I wouldn't have too many places to go. Um, but Androxus isn't on the field, so someone who could finish the kill isn't really there. So I'm fairly safe, I would say, but I could take a burst damage from uh, Leon and not be able to do much. But it's also good that I am shooting this barrack. A better position here would be back left a little bit so I can use that tree that's here. I'm pointing at my monitor instead of using my mouse. Um, this tree right here, you can use to line of sight their high ground and play around it. That's what I should be doing here. I'm standing in the middle of the open. Let's see if Leon looks, ever looks to punish us here. Now hitting Leon for 60s here might not seem like anything, but it's poke and it forces a heal. It forces Dama to use a cooldown to heal her. Um, so any poke is always good poke. Now, what we were trying to do there is get on high ground, but I said, screw it. Um, let's just sit on payload. But then I stunned the Makoa, so now I'm scared. Um, on this retake here, unless you have full control of the map like we did on Shattered, it is not good to be sitting on payload. They still have the high ground, so it is not safe. Especially when I see that Makoa stun, I'm like, nope, we are backing up, which is a very, very good call. 
Makoa could easily dash on the point here, have a Leanne or Androxus follow up, one hook, one combo, and I am dead to right. So getting off payload here was, or point was a very good option. I see the Leon dash to high ground immediately, immediately. As soon as I see this Leon, I need to be getting into a better position to line aside her. Now, as soon as I see it right here, I get this heal off and I move to the right. I could have done it a little bit sooner. I could have got the heal on the con, but it was, it was close. Let's see right here. Yeah, I got greedy for that heal and I died for it. Honestly, we don't go for the heal there and we just line aside ourselves so Leon doesn't burst us down. That's our fault. Um, and we could have hid there faster and kind of let the con survive on his own. Let's go and skip through this. We come back to payload here. Um, skip too far there, whoops. We see our team, both of our tanks are down. We have just DPS up. So we're gonna go to high ground. We see our Octavia's in trouble. We dismount to heal her, throw the stun up there. Now this is risky because um, we don't know what's up here. And as you can see, I was very hesitant to go up there, but this still holds position and takes us up to high ground. Talus goes for the touch, TPs. We'll play it on him. Um, we see our Atlas going to touch. Um, we're gonna try to save our Octavia there, but we couldn't really save her. We had to be careful because Makoa's in her face. So we're kind of just doing some jump healing right now to make sure he can't hook us. Um, there's not much we can do outside of just kite him away and just run away. We see the Androxus. We know we're pretty much dead. Um, there's not much more we can do. We're hiding here. We can't get line aside of the con. So we kind of just fall back. There's not much we can do there and we don't want to feed any credit. So we fall back and we don't, we try not to die here at least. I don't remember if I die here or not, but we just fall back so we don't feed credits. I'm um, really trying to save the Octavia, but it just is not possible there. Leon tries to overextend to kill me. Um, she should be punished for that, but we didn't have enough damage up to do so. So she lives. So now we're gonna get up to high ground here. This is a very good position for a support is here on the high ground using this sawmill to top people up on high ground on this platform here and on the left side. So now I see my cons pushed up. So now I'm gonna play with him. So I'm pretty safe. I see my Talus died on the left. I know Mako and uh, Damba are over there. So I'm free to play aggressive since I'm not gonna get hooked. So I play aggressive with my two tanks, kill the turret. So we're, they're not just beating us in the back because that's just free damage we have to take. And we keep going with our tanks. Um, it's a little bit risky now because I know where Makoa is. Um, couldn't save the Octavia there. Maybe we save a heal and jump peeker, but it just wasn't possible. Uh, we see he's trying to dash for us and both of my tanks are overextended. So I'm trying to play in a position where I, they can easily come help me. Because this is really the only position I can be in to heal them. If I go to high ground on the top left, top right here, then the enemy team knows exactly where I'm at. And they can easily send Androxus. So if I'm up here, Androxus knows exactly where I'm at and can easily dive me. At least here, they have to search for me first. So I'm playing this and it's kind of on my team to line the sight me, um, not on me to get line of sight of them. And it's usually like that for supports. It's typically on your team to get line of sight of you. As long as you're in a decent enough position. So now I'm playing on payload here. The only thing I'm worried about is the barrack pushing us. We're in a fine position now. We have to slowly start falling back because they're taking ground. We know the Androx is on the right side since the Talus died. That was a little bit risky to push up there. I don't know why I really did that. There's no purpose. And now I finally have time to go to high ground. So the reason why I didn't do this sooner and get onto high ground sooner was because there was a constant fight. If I had taken the four to five seconds to get to this high ground position before this moment, I would have missed about two heals. That was life or death for that con and Atlas a few times. So waiting until the fighting slowed down and there was a lull in the fighting so I can get to high ground was the play. And I think that was the reasonable position and a uh, reasonable decision, decision in very good position now. So now I'm just up here topping off our Octavia. We saw the Mako on the left. I'm not sure if I really noticed him. Um, there's the hook. Octavia did not notice. Let's see if we can top her off and save her. Gonna help her with the Androxus body block for her a little bit, keep her alive. We know Makoa's on the ramp there, so we're playing as far away as we can. But now the con's pushing up, we're free to push up. Octavia took some damage there. Should have turned around and healed her, but that's fine. So now our, both of our tanks are pushing up, or at least one of our tanks are pushing up. So we start playing aggressive, but then Leon comes out of nowhere, uh, missed the beam. We'll play it on her. 
Uh, Leon comes from this doorway here, which was unsafe. Um, I should have known that, and I should have realized that, that this position was open. Even though my team was all the way pushed up, she still could have been there, and I should have realized that sooner and not pushed up the way I did. I should have just stayed back and waited for my team to clear and then push up. So this is bad positioning here, and I got too aggressive too fast. Go ahead and skip forward. So yeah, so far, the biggest takeaways from this map is high ground is key but if you can't get high ground find the most efficient place you can see all of your team um, and always have a fallback location so now we're using this tree as line site we know somebody mounts it into the back line um, octavia knows it as well we go ahead and drop off with our team um, to try to finish this kill but i know my tanks are in trouble so this isn't really my job to finish the kill um, there's literally nothing we can do for that con ulti which is unfortunate um let's see we're gonna wait for him to line aside us there it is. Now we could try to take high ground here, but our team is completely in trouble. We find the pick on Damba. So I'm kind of saving ult since we have their support dead to rights, which is honestly a really good call. And now we have ult for the retake. That's good positioning there. Um, scroll back here. As Androxus dives here and we know he's behind us, dropping here and following Octa our Octavia was a very good call because if Androxus finds us alone on high ground, we're dead. Uh, we need at least someone to try to help us. Now here, I could have got back up to high ground after I dropped here and Androxus wasn't in trouble. I could have used this dash to take myself to high ground rather than Atlas so I can have better line of sight on everybody. But that was like the most efficient play. This wasn't bad either. If I was high ground here, this Khan has no chance of dying. If I don't hit that stun, I think he dies. So if I was high ground, I could have saved him even better. You know, Androxus, man, that was a great Tal Assault, by the way. What a savior. <clears throat> okay, we're still on low ground here. Now, I could take the time here to get to high ground, but I know we have full control. So I go ahead and go to payload and go ahead and start farming credits. We know Makoa's down and their damage just came up. So we're in a pretty safe spot here. We're telling Atlas to go push up. There's no reason for you to be here. I'm farming my own credits here. Again, four per second. It is really good. Look at those credits fly up. Leanne starts to dive me. So I just use my ultimate, stay alive, dodge her ulti. Um, panic ult like that, I already plan to ulti, um, but I used it as a immunity to her damage, which was a really good call. And it helps snowball the end of that uh, push or the end of the point fight. So I, all, I fall all the way back to high ground here just to be safe because we don't know where their entirety of their team is. Um, once I get off payload and live here, we kill Barrack. I don't know where Andro Makoa is particularly, so we're kind of just looking for them and we're getting back so we can be safe. Um, we see Makoa, we see Damba. We don't know where Andro is, but we go ahead and start pushing up with our team um, because we know where the Makoa is. And if Andro dives us, you know, we can fall back to our team for help. We see the Andro, and the best thing for us to do here is exactly what we did. Um, even though we died, the best thing to do here is to get under him now well there's two actually there's two different options here number one go right under him because one of the hardest things to do in paladins or fps games is shoot straight down so we get under him and get line of sight and make him put him in a bad position or we dive to where lunzi and bones is over there but with that andrew has free shots on us we are in the open until we can fully get over there and we might have died before we could even get into a safe spot and makoa and damba were looking there so they could easily finish us as well so this was a good call go under him and just hope for the best hope somebody reacts but unfortunately he goes ahead and alts he doesn't have to aim it's a free kill for him it's tragic and honestly if i was being really smart here um since I still hadn't known where the Androxus was, I could have swung all the way over to the right. That would have been the best play. Wait for my dash to come up and then dash top right. That would have been the best position for us. But sitting main here leaves us very vulnerable from the left and we died because of it. So the best way to fix this first would be flank all the way to the right since our left is vulnerable. Our right is secure. Go right to where the area that is secure. But instead we left ourselves vulnerable to the left side going main which is a bad decision. But to fix our mistake, we made the best decision we could, even though we made a mistake, 
you're gonna make mistakes, but then you have to realize like, what are my options here? I made a mistake. Don't worry about the mistake. Worry about what you can do in that moment to fix where you're at. And I made one of the, I made a good decision dashing under him, even though he ulted, you know, he still uses ult to kill us and he could have just hit every shot, but Octavia dies there. I know my left is fairly secure because I saw we were on the left. Alice is pushed up. We know where Liana is, but we're not 100% sure where that Andro may be. We took a lot of damage from Leon there, and we're just going to go ahead and line of sight. We see the Androxus. We know we're fairly safe. Uh, we're a bit worried about the Leon diving us, and we're just going to use our passive healing to live. Now, here is a good position. We know Octavia is on the ramp here, so we know the right side is safe. Mm, she dies, and now I'm in a bad position. I need to just push forward with my team, which I do. I made the very good call to do this, even though I died. You don't want to fall back in situations like that. You want to push forward with your team. It's the safest space for you to be. They go ahead and use fear there, which is very good for us. Um, now we know fear is down and we can position where Damba can't really fear us. <laughs> we know he can't fear us, so we can be a bit more aggressive with our positioning. Again, left side is secured. We go with our team. We follow up this con since we know he's low. Beam up high ground, maybe get them from stopping line of sight. We see the Andro diving and we turn. Um, Octavia is in a position where I cannot heal her. So I go ahead and ignore her and let her heal out of combat. And I fix my positioning, so I'm in a good spot now. Rather than trying to get line of sight on her, I know she's in a safe spot and she wasn't gonna die. I Okay, so interesting note here. Makoa pushes the high ground. And he doesn't notice me at first. I shoot one shot, but then I realize, oh, I shouldn't shoot at him anymore. I shoot this shot, but then I was like, oh, I don't want to pull his attention because he can easily hook us and finish this because we see Atlas below us and Khan to our left. We're not in a good position. So we go ahead and swing left, don't shoot at him, and we push towards our Khan, and Talos comes to help. So good on us for not overshooting at him or his shield. We go and drop off high ground since it was unsafe, since we don't have it secured. And we take the main position here. It's not a great position to be in, but you know, it is what it is. It's our best position for the time being. We top off the Talus. Now we see we have two picks. We go ahead and play this slow, but we play around our Atlas. We see Octavia's in the left, so we know it's fairly safe and we play with her. We have left side secured, so I play left side. They can easily come from the top of us, but I am with Octavia, which makes us a little bit more safe. Um, at least you have somebody there to help you, makes it safe. Now, it's not the most safe position, but again, someone can't help us. Now, I popped the salty. For some reason, I felt like we needed it. Um, we had two picks already. I don't know why it was a bad ulti, but let's just ignore that. Okay, back onto the point fight. We're back here on high ground. Same thing as before, but I'm leaning right side since I know my team's over there, and I'm using this tree a bit more to help line the side the Leon. Khan's in trouble. We throw the stun. We stay our high ground, which really well so far. Really good. We're using this tree more to line of sight the Leon. Now we move into the open since we have two picks. We see the Khan is on the right side, so we dash right side. Now, now that we have two picks, we can get aggressive, but we don't want to over-aggress like we did earlier and we messed up. This time I made the correct decision. Atlas went point, Khan's right side. If I dash left, I can die. If I dash point, I can die. If I dash right, I can now help our team snowball better and get the heal onto Khan and still be safe since the Khan is over there. So I make the decision to dash to the Khan, which was the good decision. So it helps us snowball with our team. Now that I see we're starting to fall back, we're starting to get some positioning advantages here. I try to push up to high ground. Now, this position here is probably one of the dumbest things I did this game. Atlas is below, or At Khan is below, Atlas is on point, and Octavia's on the right. I could be dead to rights here if anybody pushes from high ground and peeks me. So I get out of there, and I'm like, ah, I'm in a dumb spot. <laughs> and we go ahead and fall back. Now I walk into the barrack alt here, a little risky, um, take a little unnecessary damage there. And like I said, since I was on point there, I took way too much damage, but since I have moving speed, I can get away from the Koa. This was a bad place to be. This isn't my job to finish off this barrack. I should be repositioning for my team, but I'm playing too aggressive here. Um, and I got away with it since I'm the best fear in the game, of course. But no, this is not a good position to be in. Um, we don't have anything secured, so I should have just fell back and found a better spot to be in. 
I got lucky because I have moving speed and Makoa can't chase us. It's not possible. I have 25% every time I pop heal uh, for 1.5 seconds. So it's very hard to chase me and finish me. Now here, I'm in a good spot. I see we have it secured. Game's over. GG, I go to point so I can emote as you should on support. You should learn all the camera angles so you can emote. If anybody's curious to see the scoreboard, I can show it. But yeah. That is Furia on Timbermill and Shattered Desert. Um, this is how the positioning guides are going to go in the future. And the way I'm going to record them is this. Um, if you have any suggestions and different ways to do them, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I'd love to read them um, and see new ways to do this. But I think this is the most efficient way to do it is a series of videos over time that will slowly start helping you position better on specific supports, specific situations. And you'll start picking up tips and tricks as you watch. So I hope you enjoy this video. I also hope you enjoy your day, night, evening, morning, Don Dusk, wherever it is where you live. And I will see you in the next one. Later.